What's up? It's me, Tommy Mac. In this video, we are talking hand planes and how they work. The very first time I got introduced to a hand plane was in like 1977 in the seventh grade. I went to a trade school after school program and I used Stanley planes, the old school ones that we all are familiar with, right? And then 20 years later, I went to the Bennett Street School and again, I got introduced to <laughs> Stanley planes but they really weren't great Stanley planes. We went to a, a flea market and I bought a bunch of hand planes and then I had to come back to the school and I had to learn how to flatten the bottom. I had to do all this work to get those things working. And I gotta tell you what, each plane probably took like four or five hours and I learned that it's definitely worth it to me to buy a high-end plane because I don't need to do much maintenance to get it working. The funny thing about hand planes is that they come in all sorts of different sizes and shapes. And you gotta remember when hand planes were first being made, it was before power tools were invented. So I thought it'd be fun to show you the arsenal of hand planes that I have, just a few of them. So this gigantic number eight hand plane right here flattens huge surfaces, all right? That's why it's so big. This one right here is a number five, smaller pieces, right? This is a low angle plane, and you can see that the blade is at a really low angle. What that does is that it allows me to cut end grain. This plane right here is called a scrub plane. It has a circular blade and this thing buzzes down a ton of material, but it leaves a scalloped kind of surface. So you need to go back with a smoothing plane or jack plane to flatten it. This is called a shoulder plane. And this is probably like one of my favorite planes because it's so handy. I can do outside curves. I can work on some tenons. I can get some cheeks and shoulder lines. So this is like a really versatile plane. So check this one out right here. This is called a router plane. And basically it just goes up and down. And you can see the blade on the bottom. And this is what they had before electric routers. These two right here are called smoothing planes. The slang term is a jack plane. They're both the same thing. Believe it or not, the, 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 the terminology jack plane is a derogatory word that the snoots used to call guys like us who actually use these for a living. <laughs> jack planes, jack of all trades, you know, those type of like tradesmen. But anyways, this little sucker right here, this is just a little block plane. <laughs> you know, to be honest with you, I use this way more than I care to admit. Now, this is my all time favorite hand plane. This is a high angle number four and a half. I like the four and a half because it's wide like that, right? And it has a big long handle so I can grip it. Now, I gotta tell you what, if I don't know how to use it, if I don't understand anything about this hand plane, it's gonna be useless. So let me take a minute to talk to you about what a hand plane is and how it works and break this bad boy apart. The first thing you're gonna see is this right here. This is called a lever cap. Take it off, it's kinda of cool. This just keeps pressure on the blade. This is the blade and what's called a chip breaker. And this funny thing right here is called a frog. And it has these screws in the back that I can loosen. And this allows me to either move the blade forward when I'm working with really difficult material or if I'm trying to get a lot of material off, I can loosen it and move it back. That way the blade gets a, a, a deeper dig. You know what I'm saying to you? If it's really like difficult with like tiger maple, it's way up close. Now, what do you want to do with a hand plane when you first get it out of the box or if you buy one? You want to check to make sure that it's flat on the bottom. The way that I do that is I take my square, I'm going to hold it right on the bottom of the hand plane, and I'm going to hold it up to the light, and I'm just going to be looking to see if there's any light. All right, now, if there's a little bit of light, what you need to do is grab a piece of sandpaper, clamp it to a flat surface, and you just want to go across and use a hand plane just like this until there's a scratch pattern from front to back. But since this one's already flat, I don't need to do that. Next, what you want to do is you want to check the perimeter of the plane to make sure there are no dings on it, all right? Especially back here, because this is like the last thing that interacts with the piece of wood. And if there's like a big honking snot right there, what's going to happen is it's going to leave an impression on the piece of wood. So quick breakdown, make sure this is flat. Make sure you can adjust your frog to where you need it to be. I like to just set it a little far forward, you know what I mean? And it seems to be working for me really well. Let's talk about the blade and how it interacts with that chip breaker. This little gizmo took me forever to figure out. The first thing I want to do is grab my lever cap. I'm going to go onto the screw right here and I'm going to just loosen it. Then I'm going to twist it this way. Take it apart. This is basically just a big chisel. So what you need to do is make sure the back of it is flat and you have a really sharp edge. So what I like to do is just grab a shappy and I just draw a line on the back of it like this here. Just on the edge, okay? Don't get carried away. Then I'm gonna come over to my stone, make sure I'm holding it flat, make sure that the stone's actually flat and I'm just gonna push across. Look at that. 
no black, it's totally flat, all right? So next, what I need to do is check the edge. And the way that I check the edge is I go across my thumbnail, and I'm trying to feel for any kind of dings or dents, right? And trust me, your thumb is gonna definitely tell you what's going on. If there are dings, what I'm gonna do is hold this up high like that and come across my stone lightly several times until you can go back with your thumbnail, check that edge to make sure that it's perfectly ding free. When it comes to the angle of a, of a plain iron or even a chisel, 25 degrees or 30 degrees. Softwood, hardwood, to be honest with you, I really don't know. I couldn't make the decision, so I just hollow grind this out at 27 and a half and it's been working fine for me for years. Now, this is really, really important. This is the chip breaker. It does exactly what it says. It breaks the chips, all right? You know those like the curly cues that come off the plane? It's because of this thing. And it's really important to know how these two pieces of metal interact with each other. And what you wanna do is you wanna put them together, slide it down, twist it, and then put a little pressure on the, on the screw and bring it forward slowly. And what I'm looking for, hang on. <laughs> what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to minimize how much of the bottom of the plane iron is visible. I think like 330 seconds is more than enough. I'm gonna tighten it down with this right here. So now you can see how shiny it is right here. It interacts with the bottom of the plane iron. It's super flat. So now it's ready to go back into the hand plane. Now this is like that game operation, all right? You don't wanna bash the size of the hand plane with this thing. So look at nice and easy. Chip breaker down. It'll be obvious, okay, because there's a slot in the frog for the screw. There you go, put the lever cap on. Make sure that it's snug, but not too hot. Perfect. So it's flat, it's all debris free all around the edges. There's nothing on the back end. The blade is sharp. It's put together closely with the chip breaker and it's ready to go. The last thing I want to talk about is how to store your hand planes. Now I've seen guys hang them on the wall, which is kind of cool. But me personally, what I like to do, I got a drawer right here. And each one of them has its own little spot, see? So when I'm not using them, they're out of the way. They're not going to hit each other. They look cool. And I'm never going to damage them. Nice, right? I close up the drawer. Oop, I forgot one. <laughs> I forgot one. All right. Well, that's a little anatomy of the hand plane and what each size does. And trust me, it takes a long time to learn how to use a hand plane. So if you want to know how to use it, you'll have to watch a different video. <laughs> well, that's about it. I'm Tommy Mac. I'll see you next time.